So I'm going to show you some studies. And I had to, I had to pick a few. In other words, the, this part of a course that we teach, which I'll tell you about later, there's eight hours of lecture. So I'm always speaking in front of this group trying to condense you know, 12 hours into one or eight hours into one. That's sort of what this is here. But I'll show you just a few studies. And I, and I think in some cases I'll read the, the study conclusions because they're pretty profound and, and worth repeating to you verbatim. So a study of 1,046 women between the ages of 20 and 93 showed that women eating a traditional diet of vegetables, fruit, fish, and whole grains had lower risk of major, major depression, uh, dyspnea, and anxiety. Um, the risk increased for women who ate more of a Western-style diet with fried foods, refined grains, sugar, and beer. A study of over 3,400 um, uh, middle-aged people regarding diet and depression. Whole food diet, fruits, vegetables, and fish. Processed food diet was refined grains, high-fat sweet desserts, processed meat, high-fat dairy. Participants in the highest quintile of eating whole foods had a much lower risk of depression. Data from prospective cohort study of 4,215 United Kingdom civil servants concluded poor diet is a risk factor for depression in women. The healthier the, the diet, the lower the risk of depression. And I'll show you some mechanisms of action for this that'll make it a little more clear. Over 1,100 adults, 30, 30 to 64 years of age, with low education and income levels, diet quality significantly was associated with the risk of depression. Now, one thing that I'll mention to you that I think is really important is that when we start talking about diet and any disease, and I don't even consider, I don't even like to talk about mental illness, I don't think there's any such thing. I think people have difficulty with everyday life, so I, I hate to use those kinds of terms, but, but when you're talking about diet and any disease, everybody's looking for a food or a nutrient. So if I take vitamin C, will it make me better? If I take high dose niacin, B vitamins, you know, whatever the, the, the condition happens to be. But I will tell you from scouring the medical literature, you are hard pressed to find a dietary supplement, a single nutrient or a single food that improves mood. What you find is that people who eat in a particular way, a pattern, have better health. So those are the studies I'm sharing with you. And when I taught this class the last time, uh, one of the assignments that the students had, and I'm, I'm kind of funny about the way I give assignments, and I probably shouldn't say this on tape because the next group will know, but um, I phrased the assignment um, to, to, to make people think that they're supposed to come up with benefits. So I assigned, you know, I want you to come up with, I want you to do some research and write a paper on the benefits of these supplements for uh, mental health. And so well, some of them even wrote to me and said, is this a trick question? Because I can't find any benefits. I said, well, just do the assignment and then you report what you find. You know how this works. And so they all come to class and they're a little bit, you know, confused about this. We meet, it's a teleconference class and they turned in their papers and the first student says, Frankly, I don't think I understood the assignment right because you told us to find benefits and I couldn't find any benefits. I said, well, that was the assignment. Okay, so you, you found out exactly what I wanted you to find out. I just didn't want you to start with, with some kind of bias to look for information refuting the claim. I wanted you to look for information confirming the claim and then tell me what was really there. So that's why all these studies are based on dietary pattern because that's where we really see a difference. Um, a study of, a nine, of 97 adults with mood disorders, there was a consistent association between more nutrient-dense diets and better mental health. Where's the nutrient density in the diet going to come from? It's going to come from plant foods. There's no nutrient density in toaster pastries, right? Pretzels, that kind of thing. Um, this, and I'm going to read this quote. I said sometimes the quote is worth reading from the article. This detailed analysis, analysis in a clinically diagnosed sample was consistent with prior epidemiologic surveys revealing an association between higher levels of nutrient intakes and better mental health, all right? Um, diabetes and depression are common comorbid conditions, and you, I can understand that. It's kind of depressing being a diabetic. A diet with more vegetables, leafy greens, fruit, cooked whole grain, and whole grain bread, protective against depression and type 2 diabetes. And by the way, while you're getting rid of your depression associated with diabetes, you can get rid of your diabetes too. All right, so that's one of the things that I like about uh, talking about diet is the breadth of the effect. In medicine, usually the treatment that you get is very specific for the particular thing that the doctor is seeing you for. And one of the problems we have in medicine is it's so fragmented, have you noticed that? Like you go to lots of different doctors, for a lot, everybody specializes in a body part, and they're prescribing a specific treatment for that body part that they're in charge of, your brain, your pancreas, your liver, whatever. Well, when you talk about diet, the breadth of the effect is really worth talking about because you solve one problem, you solve a whole lot of others, and you prevent a whole lot of bad stuff from happening too. So much better approach, and also less expensive than all this medicine. 
A study of over 3,800 Iranians between the ages of 20 and 55, lacto-vegetarian diet was associated with a lower risk of depression. People in the top quintile of the healthier diet had decreased risk of anxiety as compared to the bottom quintile. The traditional diet with lots of fat, lots of meat, was associated with an increased risk of depression. The worse the diet, the worse the risk of anxiety. Okay? So again, we're not talking about neurotransmitters in the brain. We're actually talking about people feeling better when they eat better. Is that hard for people to understand? Has anybody here changed to an optimal diet and said, this is the worst I've ever felt in my life? Broccoli, rice, sweet potatoes, and salads really make you sick. Okay? People don't feel that way. They feel more energy. They feel better, right? Um, and I, I love this, again, a quote, recommendation to increase the intake of fruits, citrus fruits, vegetables, tomato, and low-fat dairy products, and to reduce the intakes of snacks, high-fat dairy, chocolate, carbonated drinks, sweets, and desserts might be associated with lower chance of psychological disorders. Okay, so if you don't want to be depressed and anxious and psychotic, I don't think you can eat your way there, but I think it can help you get there. I think eating better can help you to remain mentally healthy. A study of 138 Seventh-day Adventist men and women, vegetarians had significantly less negative emotions than omnivores. Now, this is interesting because vegetarians consume less EPA, DHA, and omega-3 fatty acid and arachidonic acid than omnivores. It doesn't matter. And this is, again, a quote worth looking at. These results challenge what is known about the link between dietary fats and brain function and suggest an unrecognized benefit of vegetarian diets, which are naturally low in the long chain omega-3 fatty acids. So, when I, going back to the assignment that I gave the students, look into omega-3 fatty acids and find a benefit. It would tell us the benefits of taking those for mental health. Couldn't find any. Because as it turns out, what you're eating in the food is more important than that single nutrient being taken in high doses, right? So when we focus on the dietary pattern, you get a much better result. 39 omnivores randomly assigned to three diets. The control diet just kept on eating meat, fish, and poultry. The diet including fish three to four times a week and avoiding the meat and poultry, and then veg vegetarian style, avoid it all. The conclusion, restricting meat, fish, and poultry improved moods the most. Not surprising. Those randomly assigned to the vegetarian diet who were most anxious at the beginning scored lowest for anxiety in two weeks. Same with fatigue. The most tired at the beginning got better. So the people who are in the worst trouble have the most benefit from the diet, okay? Which is interesting because what you would probably intuitively might think is that the people who are in the most trouble, oh, they're in such bad shape, it probably wouldn't make any difference if they changed their diet. Not true. It really does make a difference. The author, authors noted that a high intake of arachidonic acid, which is concentrated in animal foods, causes changes in the brain that can negatively affect mood. And one of those changes is inflammation. Arachidonic acid in animal food increases the production of series two prostaglandins, which are inflammatory. Study in Puerto Rico, including 80, 80, 80 patients. Two groups, vegetarian, non-vegetarian. Not surprisingly, after what I've been telling you, anxiety and depression reported um, in the non-vegetarian group. 18-week randomized controlled trial with 292 participants. The vegan diet resulted in improvement in depression, anxiety, and productivity. A study of vegetarians, vegans, and omnivores. Again, I'll quote, increasing restriction of animal foods, conversion from vegetarian to vegan, is associated with improved mood. Now, let me tell you why this is very important. When you see a dose-dependent effect, this is very interesting. It tells you there's really something going on here. So you convert from being an omnivore to a vegetarian and it gets better. And then you convert from a vegetarian to a vegan and it gets better. It tells you the more plants you eat, the better your mental health. That, that's a very, very strong, uh, that, that increases the strength of the, of the finding quite a bit. Same thing is true with adolescents. Subjects with poor dietary pattern develop more emotional and behavioral problems. And this is important because we have an epidemic of children who have psychological disorders, and we have an epidemic of children who don't eat well. In fact, we live in westernized countries. We have this new thing going on. I don't understand it at all. It's called kid food, right? I don't understand kid food. In a lot of other societies, when kids get weaned, they just eat food. They eat the same food as the rest of the family. And now we have kid food, and the kid food is disastrous, like macaroni and cheese, and there's a kid menu in the restaurants. And now we have adults who grew up on kid food who are convinced that they should give kid food to their kids. So we're going through generations of people where the eating habits get progressively worse because of the history of the parents. Um, Subjects with good diet at baseline had fewer psychiatric problems, but if the diet took a nosedive for the worst, then the problems began. All right? 
So a healthy diet is defined as consuming, this is what the, the authors of the study said, fruits and vegetables and avoiding junk food. Well, I think most of America's youth would be a whole lot better off, and in fact, youth in all countries would be better off if they ate a lot more fruits and vegetables and a lot less junk food. Data from almost 3,000 ethnically diverse adolescents showed a clear connection between diet and mental health. Adolescents eating unhealthy diets, the highest quintile of processed and junk food, less fruits and vegetables, more than two times more likely to have psychological problems than those eating a healthy diet. Case control study of 849 girls, adolescent girls, consumption of ramen noodles, hamburger, pizza, fried food. This is what kids live on and other processed foods associated with an increased um, incidence of, uh, of depression. On the other hand, green vegetables, fruit, higher intake of fiber associated with decreased risk of depression. And we could go on, but do you get the idea? The same research has been presented in, or done in China. And by the way, this is another important thing that I look for when I'm doing research, is that I don't want to see a study showing something. I want to see research that's been replicated in different parts of the world, different research groups, using different methodology, and come up with the same conclusions. So we're doing research in Iran, we're doing research in China, in North America, in Australia, and everybody's coming to the same conclusion. What you eat has a lot to do with your psychological state, so we shouldn't be ignoring this. Another study of adolescents in New Zealand, same thing. Eating a better diet, better emotional health. Another study of 23,000 women and their children. Women who eat well during pregnancy, their children have better mental health. After delivery, women who eat better, their children have better mental health. Not hard to imagine. So the bottom line is that, and we could go on. Like I said, this, this just part of this could go on for the rest of the afternoon. But after a certain point in time, it becomes a bit repetitive. When you eat fruits and vegetables and plant foods, you feel better, and when you don't, you feel worse. So we can we go on to the next topic, I guess, at this point in time.